Let's welcome in Clay Travis, who stirs things up every morning on Fox Sports Radio. Outkick the coverage is the website. It's also the name of his radio show. Um, Clay, let, let's start with the Deshaun Jackson, followed by the Steven Jackson, who had the IG yesterday. Then he went IG live today. He doubled, tripled, quadrupled down. What's your reaction? Well, I mean, I, I, Deshaun Jackson is an idiot for what he said. And uh, I, I always say... Sometimes things that are being said are so dumb, it's it's hard for people who are of, of reasonable intelligence to even understand what the argument is. So when people started sharing this Instagram uh, post and highlighted, you know, uh, language from Deshaun Jackson, I was like, I don't even understand what he's saying, right? Um, and uh, ultimately, I think if you're quoting Hitler in a good way, it's probably a bad sign, right? Let's just start like let's just start with that overall uh, prognosis of overall uh, analysis here. And to me, the bigger story is not one guy making a dumb comment on social media. It's the hypocrisy of the NFL, which evidently has this players coalition, which is supposed to be aligned in favor of truth and justice and ending racism and, uh, and, and inappropriate behavior based on race, religion, anything else. They haven't said a word, right? Drew Brees says he's going to stand for the national anthem because he thinks deal, uh, de- kneeling is disrespectful, and the entire NFL explodes in indignation and outrage. Not one current NFL player has said or condemned what Deshaun Jackson said. So to me... It's just hypocrisy. It's easy to be the victim. It's hard to acknowledge when you are at fault yourself. And this is what the NBA players, by and large, want to do. They want to blame others, but when one of their own does something stupid, they don't want to hold him accountable. Correct. And, I mean, like, look, the 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 Steven Jackson is actually, you know, blaming the Jews and talking about the Jews as bankers like that's actually Hitler's playbook. Yes. That's the that's the Romans playbook. Yes. I, like th- I this mean, is, it is you know much better than I do. No, uh, I I, I actually don't. I actually don't. I know you love history as much as I do. I don't know any more than you do. I'm uh-huh. just telling you that anybody who knows anything about history knows this is like how did how did they round up the Jews? Well, they said Jews have all the money. They're greedy. They they had caricatures they're of not, them. They're not loyal. They're, right. they're out for themselves. Right. They're greedy. The, all of yes. that was the... Yeah, they tried for world domination, and they rounded them up, put them in ghettos, eventually shipped them off to, to concentration camps and executed them. Yes. Oh, yeah, by the way, just so we're aware, they also executed uh, gypsies, anyone who was homosexual. 20, 20 million people died and, in World and, War II. And, black, and anybody who was black, right? Like, that's where if you, you, you clearly don't know anything about what you're talking about. But my issue is like, there's a bunch of things. I, I, I like, I've had great interaction with Steven Jackson. I listen to him talk about basketball. He's, he's super interesting. But he had to like Google the Rothschild conspiracy theory. You couldn't Google Hitler, <laughs> right? I, I like, just, I, I, the, where, where, where are these NFL players? Just one guy to go like, hey man, I can't, I, I, I can't do this with Deshaun Jackson, Steven Jackson. Where are the NBA players? Silence is deafening. And we were all told, we were all told like, hey man, if you're a white person and you don't come out to silence, support- compl- yeah, silence is complicity. Yes. Silent, what- and even silence is violence, which is one of the stupidest slogans I've ever seen in my life. But silence is violence. So the, 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 the silence here is deafening. And it, it calls into question all of the arguments made in favor of social justice because- Social justice is not just for one person, right? You're trying to make, and this is this is my biggest issue with the NBA in general, right? The NBA, uh, and and I think the NFL to a lesser extent because it's more of a domestic league, but players in the NBA are going to have slogans on the back of their jerseys, right? They are uh, approved slogans by the NBA. They are effectively wearing propaganda on their jerseys. Yes, you could not say free Hong Kong or. Uh, or Trump 2020, you know, Trump like, 2020, or to probably be fair, they wouldn't let you probably say Biden 2020, they, they, but they, they wouldn't they, let you say like human rights for all in China or, uh, you know, hashtag Chinese democracy. Like the number of people in America who are truly suffering from a lack of human rights is a pinprick 
of the number of people that don't have basic human rights in in China, right? Like, I, I, the only part I, I know you like to go to the the Hong Kong and the the, the China thing. The the only the place I will I will jump off that one is I and I do think it's hypocritical, but it is not our country, right? And, but when and, when Daryl and, and, but when Daryl Morey made the decision to say free Hong Kong and LeBron James lectured all of us on the fact that Daryl Morey was misinformed and that uh, that sometimes the First Amendment has bad consequences. When he basically gave all of China's talking points to the American public, I do think it becomes significant because whether you wanted to get involved in that debate or not, Daryl Morey's tweet made it a direct human rights issue for the NBA, and the NBA boggled that response. And the larger context that I think in which it's at play is you can't claim that you are for uh, human rights in America where we have human rights that the Chinese would dream of and then take billions of dollars from Chinese communist government because what they're going to do, make no mistake about this, when uh, when the NBA players have slogans on their jerseys, they're going to use that as propaganda in China. They're going to say, see, look how bad it is in America. These NBA players don't even have freedom from police killing them or from persecution or anything else. And they're going to use that as evidence of why democracy is not something that China should aspire to. So the NBA's jerseys are going to be propaganda for the Chinese government. That would not be the case if they allowed hashtag free Hong Kong or if they allowed somebody to say, you know, human rights in China. I mean, look, in Hong Kong right now, this is crazy. They are pulling books out of the library that deal with democracy that's what china's doing right now you will go to jail for years that the hong kong protesters are using the american flag as a symbol of all that they believe is good in the world right and we're turning our backs on them i you know my 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 thing is is this is um i i think nobody wants to hear no anymore right no, no one wants to hear no anymore. And the, the, the jerseys and the slogan on the floor, like at some point, like Adam Silver has to say no, right? Has to. Well, like, I, I, here's what I, I, I you, yeah, you, it's an you, interesting you point. To, you, you, you have to say no be, because you are, you are going to ostracize a good portion of the people who actually pay your salaries. Here's the not, large, not yeah. the owners. It's the fans. And there are fans that don't agree with everything that you're promoting. Here's something that would make sense. The NBA probably needs a black commissioner to make that argument. Right? Because I think Adam Silver is like, I'm a white guy. I'm going to get called racist if I try to stop any of this from happening. Not fair to Adam Silver. Not fair to Roger Goodell. But if Condoleezza Rice were the NFL commissioner, she could say things that Roger Goodell cannot say from a pure optics perspective. Now, we can talk about why that's fair or unfair. I don't think it is. I think we should judge everyone, as Martin Luther King said, by the content of your character, not by the color of your skin. But the way the media behaves today, Condoleezza Rice, as the commissioner of the NFL, could get away with arguments that Roger Goodell could not. And I think Adam Silver is worried that if he stands up to NBA players and says, hey, you know what? I don't think names on the jersey is a good decision. There's also the possibility here, we haven't heard it talked about a lot, that this is part of a large compromise and Adam Silver cares more about players standing for the national anthem than he does about jersey slogans. And so the NBA players are getting Black Lives Matter on the court and they're getting jersey yeah. slogans. And in exchange, they're not going to kneel for the anthem. I don't know that that's happened. I don't know I, I if that's the case. But I, we'll I, see. I don't think I, I don't think that can be the part where he says no. I, I just don't. Uh, I get I get I get I get two more. Uh, Clay Travis joined us, Doug Gottlieb Show, Fox Sports Radio. Uh, Kaepernick's tweet on the 4th of July call, he said, you know, we'll not celebrate uh, a holiday that celebrates white supremacy. It's white supremacist holiday. And now, you know, he's got a documentary. It's going to come out in a couple of years, obviously, with uh, done by ESPN and Jamel Hill, which is the, the whole thing is comical. Um, uh, is he employable? Like there was that there was there was a moment there where you're like, oh, Goodell kind of made it seem like he's employable now. I don't I think, think he, with it. I, I think, think with he, that tweet, he doesn't want to. I think that was 100%. the I don't want to. I want to be a I want to be a martyr. Hundred percent. He doesn't want to be employed. Look, first of all, he's not going to make much money. 
because we know that Cam Newton and Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton are all more accomplished backups than Jameis Winston. I mean, sorry, than uh, than Colin Kaepernick, and none of them got big money. So, I mean, I think Andy Dalton might have gotten three million dollars. Uh, Jameis Winston got a million, roughly, and so did Cam Newton. The market for backup quarterbacks in the NFL, who are far more accomplished than Colin Kaepernick, is at most a couple of million dollars a year. He's making more than that from from Disney and ESPN to make a documentary, which will be a total fraudulent documentary that's designed to make him look like a hero. We know this already, even before it's made. I mean, that's why he's doing it. But he makes more money as a person who claims that America is an awful place than he does as an actual athlete. And that's been my biggest criticism of Nike and everybody else from the get-go. Colin Kaepernick, to my mind, is the first athlete in the history of America to make infinitely more money not playing sports than he does playing sports. It used to be a Nike shoe deal was a hallmark of excellence. Now it's a hallmark of just being able to create outrage. And it certainly is a tremendous irony when you get filthy rich in America by arguing that America is an awful place. I'm not sure there's any other country in the world where that's possible. Well, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of racism all time high I heard from Stephen Jackson, which, oh, which is, is the, one of the dumbest comments of the right. year. We certainly. had the civil, we had the civil war. It happened, happened well, here. Also we had Jim we, Crow. We had race riots. Even, race let's wars. take it outside of America. The history of the world is one where slavery occurred everywhere, everywhere. When you everywhere. beat, when you defeated another tribe, you made that you either killed everybody or you made them your mm-hmm. slaves, right? I mean, like that's the Greek, and, the and Roman you, and Empire, you, and, and you raped the women, right? Like yeah, that, that I mean, that, that's like that, that actually happened. literally happened everywhere. So, yes. uh, so the idea that that racism is an all time high now. I mean, has anybody ever seen the Roman Empire? <laughs> I mean, has anybody ever seen uh, the, the 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 history no, of no, the world? It's, like I, it's, it's, I thought History Channel was really interesting and is a great watch. Apparently, 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 I'm wrong. Clay, most people Clay, on social media think history began like uh, the day Donald Trump was elected. Uh, Clay Travis joining us outkick the coverage. Y- you have been a coronavirus denier. No, I wouldn't say for- I'm a denier. I just the the, the coronavirus we is, is exist, but we shouldn't change the way that the entire world lives. And certainly we should like the kids oh, need to be back in school this fall. Oh, okay. the, the problem with the kids in school is the problem with not having them in school is how do their parents go to work? The problem with having them in school is not the kids themselves. It's everything else, right? The, it's all the data and, doesn't reflect that they transmit vectors of the no, virus. No, very but you're going to, but you have all the other adults coming to the campus is part of the issue, right? Yeah. But so I think if the, you, if you, if you don't want to teach, you shouldn't have to teach. Uh, if, if you're an older teacher, maybe go ahead and decide to sit this year out. But uh, the, the the impact in a negative way to me of kids not being in school, I know you got young kids too, is far more substantial than the risk of them being I, in school. I, look, I, I get it. I'm just wondering, we would all agree that the Ivy League, pretty smart folks, right? They're saying, hey, no no fall sports. Now, yeah, but college, now, is a, college is a luxury, right? It's not yeah, but, a necessity. If you have a kid who's a first or second grader or a third okay, grader, okay, but what, they what have happened, to be what happened, I don't, But like, listen, I don't want to get an argument with you on, on the elementary school. Do, do we have college football this year? I think so. I, I really do. In um, what form? Uh, I think it's possible that uh, the non-conferences are not going to happen. You know, the games out of conference. Do, do you think people understand the financial ramifications no. for college towns and for all of these non- uh, let's just say BCS schools, no. they make their money for the athletic departments on those guarantee games, but then the college towns, the Tuscaloosas of the world and Knoxville's, they make huge money having those those guarantee yeah. games. I don't think people understand how much this affects an economy. Oh, no. Most people are too dumb to understand the business impact. Like I talk on my show about there's a, you either think like an owner or you think like an employee. And 95% of Americans are comfortable thinking like employees. And so they don't think about the larger context of business or how any of that is constructed and set up. I mean, look, Stanford just canceled in the last couple of hours, I think, a huge number of athletic uh, you know, sports. In, and Stanford is one of the wealthiest universities in the country. Um, all Every athletic department is predicated on football existing everywhere. Everywhere it's where the money comes in. Um, and so I think what might end up happening before all is said and done, first of all, I think like the bowl season – that's done, right? Like, I think what's going to end up happening is conferences might just expand the conference, uh, you know, games themselves and try to limit the overall amount of travel. 
I think it's likely that maybe the only people who can be uh, present are some kids and then the high-end donors who have access to the luxury suites because luxury suites sort of naturally yep. socially distance. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't care. I, I've been on this uh, train for the whole time. I don't care about crowds, right? Like as long as I can watch a game on television, I have zero interest in how many people are there. And I say that as a guy who's got season tickets to football games. Um, as long as I can watch the game take place on television, I'm fine. Clay Travis, the show is Outkick the Coverage. So is the website. Check it out. Clay, uh, get some get some rest. We'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it, my man. Keep up the good work. Pleasure is all mine.